Yo guys, what is going on? My name is Vexile, but you can call me Nick, and today I'm bringing you my first ever UFC predictions and breakdown video. I uh, changed up the camera angle a little bit. I'm leaned back, you know, nice, nice zoomed out angle, you know, nice casual approach to this whole video. So basically, this is a new series I'm bringing to the channel where I'm going to be breaking down and tr predicting, hopefully correctly, every single UFC pay-per-view uh, fight night event. Not every fight on those because that would take forever and not every fight is that entertaining in my opinion and uh, these usually happen on Saturdays and I have to work on Saturdays so I don't even get to watch all the fights but I'm just going to be breaking down the ones that I find entertaining, interesting, exciting, you know what I mean. So for UFC 272, actually I'm in intrigued and invested in every single fight on the main card so that's what we're going to be doing and breaking down today. We're going to be breaking down and trying to predict every single fight on the main card. So let's just jump right into it. Opening up the show, we got Sergey Spivak versus Greg Hardy. Now, what I don't know. See, this is my first time doing this video. So how do I go about doing this? First, let me talk about the odds. I feel like the odds are kind of odd in this one. You know, the the underdog, Greg Hardy being a near two to one underdog. I don't know about that. I can see exactly why Sergey Spivak is the uh you know, favorite. It makes a little bit of sense to me. He's got more experience. He's more well-rounded, you know, things like that. Uh, he's pro He's got better cardio, things like that. But, you know, I don't think that this, this fight is like that, uh, you know, big of a margin between the two. I think this fight's somewhat unpredictable. You never know. Heavyweight is always severely unpredictable. If you ever notice that the rules of MMA and logic and reasonable like reasonable thinking and things like that never apply to the heavyweight division. Like on paper, Derek Lewis should have absolutely beat Tai Tuivasa, but he didn't. On paper, Surreal Gan should have absolutely beat uh, uh, Francis Ngannou, and he was. And then Francis Ngannou became a wrestler out of nowhere. You know things like that. Uh, DC should have absolutely beat Stipe in the second fight. He didn't. You know the th on paper, obviously. The rules of MMA never really apply here. So I, I know why Sergey Spivak is the favorite. You know, he's got the grappling ability and, uh, you know, that usually helps with the odds a lot. He's got the experience. He's more well-rounded. He's got better cardio, things like that. But this is heavyweight and none of those things apply here. You know, it's all just about power and just luck. I don't want to say luck of the draw because that comes off as like disrespectful, but it's like fate almost in a way. So I was looking at the uh, these guys' most recent fights. So we got Tai Tuivasa versus Greg Hardy. That was a recent one. And uh, Tai Tuivasa won that fight, obviously. Tai Tuivasa beat Greg Hardy. But Greg Hardy actually rocked Tai Tuivasa pretty bad. He caught him with a right hand and then rushed in for the finish and then got clipped with a left hook, I believe it was. But he was able to rock Tai Tuivasa. So that's nothing to count out. In his fight before that, he fought Marcin Tybura, and he got knocked out in the second round. The striking was pretty much even. Marcin got one. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I hope I hope so. He got one takedown in the fight, but, you know, nothing too crazy. But also, when I was watching Spivak's most recent fights, his two most recent fights to be specific, Alexei Olenek was his second most recent fight, and uh, he didn't look that impressive on the feet, let me tell you. I know he wasn't going to shoot for takedowns like he usually does against someone like Alexei Olenek who can submit you from anywhere at any time. I get that. But the stand-up of Spivak against someone like Alexei Olenek did not look very good in my opinion. He didn't really have a significant striking defense. He kind of just like bunches his shoulders up and just leaves his hands in front of his face and kind of looks like a deer in the headlights. Um, slow shots from uh, Olenek cracked him rocked him good you know uh Olenek was throwing very telegraphed very far lunging body shots things like that no counters no uppercuts no pressure and nothing he kind of just let it all happen and then in his next fight he went against someone like Tom Aspinall who's you know a very good striker very quick in and out always moving around he didn't land a single strike against Tom Aspinall he didn't land one you know he's just he just became a punching bag absorbed about 20 strikes and then got knocked out with all that being said, that leads me to believe Greg Hardy is going to win this fight. I think Greg Hardy is going to get a first round knockout because as you know, heavyweight is never predictable. Heavyweight, the way things should go in the heavyweight division never end up going that way. Sergey Spivak should take down Greg Hardy and he should last longer than him, but it's heavyweight. He's not going to. Greg Hardy comes out ad admittedly pretty quick. You know, he's in and out. He's, he's like kind of light on his feet, you know, always, always like 
like uh what's it called like uh fainting i was gonna say flexing he's always fainting you know like getting ready to shot like throw the big shot and he he rocks most of his opponents he rocked Tai to ivasa and with someone who i noticed didn't have good striking defense like spivak i think greg hardy's gonna knock him out in the first round um, and another thing to back up my uh, prediction here is I know Greg Hardy hasn't been attempted to been taken down a whole lot in his career, but right now he does have an 80% takedown defense. So I'm calling Greg Hardy round one knockout. I wouldn't say that's a lock or anything. I could see a world where Greg Hardy loses, but I do favor Greg Hardy. It's not a lock or anything in my opinion. I wouldn't comfortably put a lot of money on Greg Hardy for being the underdog, but I'd throw like 10, 15, 20 bucks on him. Why not? Up next, we have Kevin Holland versus Alex Oliveira. Let's talk about these two. Both of them are on a three fight skid. Alex Oliveira just lost to Shavkat. I always got to take a time, take my time to pronounce this one. Shavkat Rachmanov. That's a completely justifiable loss. That's understandable. He then lost to Randy Brown, and he also lost to Nico Price. Nico Price pretty handily, 29-28, pretty obviously. I, just, I rewatched that fight for this. Um, Nico Price is decent on the feet, you know, but he is kind of slow. He does gas out, and he was getting clipped and dropped and rocked by someone like Nico Price. Kevin Holland is not technically on a three-fight skid. He lost to Derek Brunson. He lost to Marvin Vittori. And then he no-contested with Kyle Dawkins. So, but let, let's note those uh, Kevin Holland losses. He lost to Derek Brunson, who took him down six times. He lost to Marvin Vittori, which took, who, who took him down 11 times. And Kyle Dawkins, you know, was that was looking okay. But then it ended in a no-contest in the f- first round or something, like super early on. We didn't really know how that fight was going. But Kevin Holland's now moved down to 170, which I always thought 170 was good for him. You know, 170 is good for him. He's 6'3 with an 81-inch reach. He's got 5 inches of reach on Alex Oliveira. He's got 4 inches of height on Alex Oliveira. And he's 5 years younger. So those credentials, those statistics, those attributes, those all favor Kevin Holland significantly. And if you look at Alex Oliveira's, uh, you know... Uh, your career fight style. He's never really shooting for takedowns. You know, in his, you know, he took down he took down Nico Price once, but he also got like out grappled by Nico Price in the first round, I believe it was. Besides that, he he's never he's never shooting for takedowns. He is not a wrestler, and those were the only people that Kevin Holland was losing to. Because the the striking of Kevin Holland is actually impressive, in my opinion. It's very unorthodox, very unique, very slick, and very unpredictable, which leads his opponents, you know, get hit and things like that. Kevin Holland's a good fighter. He just really needed to work on the wrestling, in my opinion. That's why this is a very good fight for him, making his 170, uh, you know, this fight being at 170. I do favor Kevin Holland to win this one. I I am going to pick Kevin Holland. I'm picking a round two or three knockout. I'm going to go with round two. Um, Kevin, Alex Oliveira was kind of gassed at the end of the Nico Price fight, and Nico Price doesn't have the best cardio either. Kevin Holland does have good cardio. He does put the pace. He does have volume and puts pressure and keeps coming. So I think uh, Kevin Holland's going to knock out Alex Oliveira in the second round. You know, sum it up real quick. It's just because... You know, Kevin Holland was, is a good striker. He was only losing to dominant wrestlers. Alex Oliveira is not a wrestler. Alex Oliveira is kind of somewhat on a decline. Kevin Holland's still young, still fresh. He's going to have better cardio, better pacing. Now that he's at 170, he's got less weight on him, things like that. It's going to help him a lot. He's going to outstrike Alex Oliveira. I say Kevin Holland is a lock. He is going to knock him out in the second round, maybe third, I'd say. I don't see this going to decision. Kevin Holland wins. Up next, we have Edson Barboza versus Bryce Mitchell, and this one is incredibly hard to pick, in my opinion. This is very, very hard to pick, because I can make a case for it. Both fighters winning and both fighters losing. So, let's talk about why I think um, Edson Barboza could win at first. Edson Barboza, he's got the experience. He's the veteran on Bryce Mitchell. You know, he's got way more experience. He's got way more time in the cage. He's got way more experience fighting someone like Bryce Mitchell than Bryce Mitchell has fighting someone like Edson Barboza, if you get what I'm going for. Edson Barboza has good takedown defense. Edson Barboza probably will get taken down, but he will probably stuff like three out of every four takedowns. The thing and and Edson Barboza isn't exactly like a uh, inexperienced grappler. Like he can navigate his way around on the ground. He's not submitting anyone except for that one person, obviously, as you can see on the screen. But he's not chasing submissions. He's not getting on the ground hoping to get a submission. But he does know how to navigate his way around the, the ground game and get in and out of things. Um, the thing about Edson Barboza is that he's 36 now. 
and he's kind of at the end of his career. And if we take a look at his most recent opponents, he's been fighting tougher competition for way longer than Bryce Mitchell has. Like he just fought Giga Chikadze, which I know people are like, oh, he's not high level after what Calvin Cater just did to him. But at the time, Giga Chikadze was like a mythical fighter. We all thought he was like the next champ. And he, you know, he fought Shane Burgos and, uh, Makwan Amerkani, I think is how you pronounce it. That's a decent win, I guess. He lost to Danny Ige in his, I think that was his 145 debut. I think he really won that fight. Um, he lost to Paul Felder. I also think he won that fight. He, I think he got robbed back to back on split decisions. And uh, yeah, he also has very good takedown defense, 78% to be exact. He's also, he throws really quick. He's got very, very like a diverse range of attacks from big spinning wheel kicks and huge body shots and things like that. Those are things that lead me to believe that Tim Barboza is going to win. The things that lead me to believe that Bryce Mitchell is going to win is I know I said that Edson Barboza is like the, uh, you know, he's the veteran, the experienced guy, but Bryce Mitchell is that young, hungry, determined, you know, scraping and clawing his way to the top up and comer. You know, he's also undefeated, which I know he doesn't have a lot of big names under his record, but, you know, he looked dominant in all of his UFC fights. You know, he he takes down every single one of his opponents, except for, uh, what was his name, Bobby Mofe, I think. Uh, he didn't take him down, but besides that... You know, uh, Bryce Mitchell's looked good in every single one of his fights. But the counter argument to that is that, oh, they're not that high level. None of them are on the level of Edson Barboza. This is true. But Bryce Mitchell is pretty quick. And I, I, feel, like, I feel like Bryce Mitchell might have better cardio than Edson Barboza. I think in the first round, maybe round and a half, two rounds, Edson Barboza has got better cardio but like the lactic acid of his muscles just build up so quick from like that fast twitch muscle fiber. Like, you know, he, he's a jacked, he's a lean guy and, you know, but like throwing those spinning wheel kicks and those quick switch body kicks, things like that, you know, he gets tired, not noticeably or dangerously tired, but I think Bryce Mitchell, I think, I think Bryce Mitchell's a better marathon runner and Edson Barboza is a better sprinter. So there's that, you know, I just noticed I have the thing on the screen wrong. Um, one of these wins aren't by knockout. They're by submission because Bryce Mitchell is actually one of the only the one of two people to have a twister submission. So that's pretty high level jujitsu to be able to pull off a twister. Him and Korean Zombie are the only ones that have ever done it. So if it gets to the ground, you know, maybe Bryce Mitchell is a slight, slightly better uh, grappler. But uh, it's super close because at, another thing for Edson Barboza is that he's got five inches of reach on Bryce. It's so tough to call. I literally could not call this fight. Um, it's literally up to like a coin toss. A coin toss, that's the word. I, I, I slightly favor Bryce Mitchell. I'm going to go with Bryce Mitchell by decision. Uh, yeah, I don't see Edson Barboza knocking him out early. Um, we've never seen Bryce Mitchell really cracked with any good shots or anything. Maybe he has a really good chin. I'm not exactly sure to tell you the truth, but, uh, Bryce Mitchell's fast. You know, he doesn't get hit a whole lot. He really doesn't. That's the thing. He, uh, you know, he's, he's good at, with the striking defense, in my opinion. Uh, that I, mean, I gotta go with Bryce. I really do. It's so insanely close. This should be a pick em. I don't know how it's like even slightly favored towards one person. But I got to go with the undefeated, young, young, hungry up-and-comer. Uh, he's got slightly better cardio, in my opinion. I think the grappling is going to be a bit too much for Edson Barboza, especially going into the later rounds. This could be another split decision that Edson gets robbed on. But I got Bryce Mitchell by decision. Not confident at all. Not locking that one in. But that's my pick. Up next, we have a very, very sad case here. We have RDA versus Hanato Moicano which first was supposed to be RDA versus Rafael Fiziev or Rafael Fiziev. If, uh, I'm just going to call him Fiziev, which that was an incredibly hard fight to break down. That one, I went back and forth for forever on that one. I think that one was really close. And then it was supposed to be versus Islam Makashev, which would have been awesome. I would love to see that fight. I still want to see that fight. RDA win or lose this fight. I still want to see him fight Makashev. It's funny. Makashev's about to get a title shot beating Bobby Green at 160 pounds. You got to beat someone. Like Michael Chandler said to Khabib, you know, 
You got it on on the quest to 30 and oh, you got to beat someone. Why can't that someone be me? Try if you can. Something like that. Islam, on the road to that title, you've got to beat someone. It, it kind of actually triggers me. I, I'm a little bit triggered that Islam is going to get a title shot off of a catchweight bout against Bobby Green. And who did he beat before? Oh, on 10 notice, by the way. Uh, 10 days notice, by the way. Bobby Green on 10 days notice. And before that, who did he beat? Dan Hooker on, what was it? Two weeks notice? And was that was that catch weight too? I don't know. Either way, this isn't about Islam Makhachev. The fight now is RDA versus Hanato Moicano. And I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. The only positive about this is that we at least get to see RDA get a win now. Because you got to respect the sh- that go- That's my prediction, by the way. I'll, I'll elaborate. I do think RDA is going to win this. You got to respect RDA. The man does not take easy fights whatsoever. He doesn't. Every single one of his fights is against someone legit. And, you know, he's never he's never just looking for an easy fight. Let's take a look at the list of RDA's opponents. Paul Felder, Michael Chiesa, Leon Edwards, Kevin Lee, Kamaro Usman, Colby Covington, Robbie Lawler, Neil Magmi, uh, Tony Ferguson, Eddie Alvarez, Donald Cerrone, Anthony Pettis, Nate Diaz, Benson Henderson, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Donald Cerrone, um, you know, there's a couple other names, Clay Guida, uh, Clay, Clayson Tebow, you know, Jeremy Stevens, the guy is fighting monsters nine times out of the 10 he fights, you know? So you got to respect him. And, you know, that's kind of what made me a bit of a fan of RDA. Uh, I do think he's like a bit cringe. I'm not like a huge fan of him, but you got to respect the hell out of him. I'm not a big fan to, I'm not like a fan boy. I'm not here running around like RDA. I really hope he wins the title one more time before he retires. It's not quite like that, but you got to respect the hell out of him. And I see him winning this fight. He's been training for a five-round main event against Fiziev for nearly two months now. He's been training for five rounds for two months. And we know RDA has the cardio to go five rounds. If we actually take a look at his fights real quick, just like I was reading, go to his fights. Most of his fights are five rounds. Went five rounds against Felder. Went five rounds against Leon Edwards. Was scheduled for five rounds against Leon, uh, Kevin Lee. Went five rounds with Usman. Went five rounds with Colby. Went five rounds with Robbie. He went five rounds with Tony Ferguson. You know, they they're they're always like and that's all in his like most recent like eight fights. Only one of them was three rounds. So RDA's got the cardio, and he's been training for a while. RDA is also a slick jujitsu black belt, and I know Hanato Moicano is, but you gotta you gotta favor RDA of being the better grappler. You really do. RDA has more tools than Hanato Moicano because as you can see, Hanato Moicano does not have any knockout victories. They're all by submission and decision. I don't see him beating RDA in a decision. There's no plausible world where I see RDA losing to decision, especially because Hanato Moicano's got, what, six, seven days to train for a five-rounder, which respect to him for taking, by the way, complete respect to him for taking this. You can't fault the guy. You can't be like, oh, this guy sucks, blah, blah, blah. You got to respect him for taking this fight. He saved the card in a sense. But but at this point in time with a week to train for five rounds, which I know they're they're still active in the in the gyms in between fights, but he hasn't had time to strategize a game plan to beat RDA. He hasn't had time to build up his cardio. He hasn't had any of that. He hasn't had any time to, you know, like come up with a game plan to maybe try and strike with RDA. Meanwhile, RDA has been training to like fight one of the best strikers ever. No, yeah, <laughs> that is not what I meant to say. I meant to say like one of the better strikers he's fought in a while. I was I would favor Fiziev being the better striker than Paul Felder and Michael Chiesa and maybe up there with Leon Edwards, but call me crazy for that. So I don't see there being any tools for Hinato Moicano to win because, you know, he's not going to outpace RDA and he's not going to outgrapple RDA. It's not going to happen. RDA is probably going to win this on the feet. Um, I don't know how he wins it, though, but I do think the striking of RDA is going to give him the advantage over Hinato Moicano because Hinato Moicano was kind of getting... I wouldn't say outstruck, but he was getting evenly struck with uh, in his most recent fight. I watched it live. uh, Alexander Hernandez. He was getting like pretty evenly striked there. You know, he was like they were one for one, basically. And RDA is a better striker than Alexander Hernandez. Just putting it out there. So RDA is going to outstrike him, but I don't know how he beats him. I'm going to call like a late TKO, like maybe round three, round four. I'm going to say round four. Because RDA doesn't really power punch, he he volume punches, and against a tired opponent that will get the TKO, which, you know, by the fourth round, 
Hanato Moicano might be a little tired because it's a week, you know. But, uh, I mean, Hanato Moicano doesn't have the best chin. He gets knocked out. Like, if you take a look real quick, he got knocked out against Fiziev. He got knocked out against the Korean Zombie. He got knocked out against Jose Aldo. Um, and he got submitted by Brian Ortega. So, that's what I see happening. But, at the, real quick, to talk about the striking thing. Hanato Moicano doesn't have the chin to take a bunch of shots. But, also, RDA doesn't knock out a lot of his opponents. His wins are mostly by... Decision or submission, decision, submission, decision. Uh, the last person he knocked out was Donald Cerrone back in 2015. So I might even favor this being a decision, but I think the five rounds are going to come and screw Hanato Moicano and get him TKO just from exhaustion in like the fourth. That's my prediction. And last but not least, we have the heated rivalry between Jorge Masvidal and Colby Covington finally meeting after years of trash talk in the cage in the main event here. Now, the odds on this one are absolutely crazy. Colby is, what, a near three and a half to one favorite? That is kind of nuts. Jorge Masvidal has been counted out a lot. Let me make a case for Jorge Masvidal, surprisingly, real quick. Jorge Masvidal has been counted out a lot in his career. No one expected him to win against Darren Till. I did, by the way. I made a nice chunk of change on that fight. I, I, I had a feeling he was going to knock out Darren Till. No one thought, including myself, he was going to beat Ben Askren. I thought he was going to get wrestle-fucked by Ben Askren. He didn't. We all know what happened there. And, uh... He outstruck Nate Diaz insanely impressively. The takedown defense of Jorge Masvidal is not bad either. It's about 74%. He made Usman go about 30% success rate on the takedowns he attempted on Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal definitely can defend takedowns. There's no no doubt about that. He he can do it. He can do it and he does do it. He's also got really good striking. He's slick and quick with his striking. He's got decent power as well. Did you see how brutal the knockout of uh, Ben Askren was? Uh, I know that was more momentum than power, but look about the one against Darren Till. That was the clean left hook. He, his head, boom, right against right against the canvas. He's got power. You know, Jorge's also got cardio. Cardio is no issue for Jorge. He can go five rounds with him, you know? He can crack Colby. You know, he can defend the takedowns of Colby, things like that. But let's be real. Jorge has a chance at winning, kind of like I have a chance of winning the lottery. That's a joke. That's a joke. He has a, he has a somewhat decent chance. If I, I don't know how to make odds, but I don't think I think I'd make Jorge like maybe like a plus one eighty, maybe a plus one ninety or something, something like that. I don't know about plus two sixty, but I do think Colby is going to get the win here. Colby, he is a uh, you know. He's got way better cardio than Jorge. Jorge has good five-round cardio. Colby has good 15-round cardio. It's insane. He's, his, his wrestling, his offensive wrestling is insane. He was a D1 wrestler. Kamaru Usman was a D2 wrestler, and he's a really good wrestler. Colby is a re re really, really good offensive wrestler. Colby is also really good with striking. His striking is severely underrated. Now, it's not like super powerful or super clean or not. It's, 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 it's fluid. That's the best way to describe it, in my opinion. He is constantly throwing. He is constantly returning his hands to his face without this mic in the way. He is constantly returning his hands to his face every strike he throws. He, he mixes in takedowns with strikes very beautifully, like what he did to Robbie Lawler. I think we might see some shades of that here. Not nearly as bad because Jorge Masvidal is going to have more offensively than uh, t uh, Robbie Lawler did, but still... You know, I think Colby's got too many tools over Jorge Masvidal to win. He's got the better cardio. Jorge Masvidal, I don't think he's going to be able to knock Colby out. Colby's got a titanium jaw. I know he got knocked out against uh, by Kamar Usman in the first fight, but he literally broke his jaw, and it was a TKO, not even a knockout. In the second fight with Kamar Usman, he got dropped, yes. He did not get knocked out, however. He did not just get put to sleep out cold. And I think Kamaru Usman might be a better uh, or more powerful striker than Jorge Masvidal. Not that this means a whole lot. I also do think Colby is a bit more disciplined and a bit more hungry to win fights and, and things like that at this stage of his career. That's a very minuscule thing to take into consideration. But I do think it does hold some factor in, in, in the outcome of this match. But uh, yeah, I favor I favor Colby Covington heavily here. Not as heavy as these odds are. I would throw maybe five dollars, maybe ten dollars max on like a Jorge upset. 
but it's nothing, nothing more than that. No more amount of money than like you would like donate at like a cash register or something crazy, you know, because I, I really don't think I don't think Jorge is going to do it. There's a slight chance, but I don't think he's going to do it. I predict Colby Covington to, you know, drag it in the deep waters, uh, wrestle him, wrestle him to death, you know, you know, put the volume on, you know, land like a ton of strikes, not significant strikes, but a ton of strikes against Jorge, you know, things like that, switch it up to the body. Speaking of switching it up to the body, Jorge does throw that body kick a lot and uh, he might get in trouble for throwing that, you know, get the kick caught and then taken down off of that. So yeah, I got Colby to buy decision. So yeah, those are my picks. Those are my reasonings. Let me know what you guys think. Who do you think? Drop your predictions for these fights down below. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, let me know by dropping a like. I usually don't ask, but if you guys like the series, I'd love to continue doing it. Thank you guys for watching. You know how YouTube works. Like, comment, yada, yada, yada. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.